As she drunkenly tries to get through her sister's wedding reception, Sarah encounters Niles, a guy who seems to weave himself so effortlessly through the party, it's almost as if he experienced it before. However, a bizarre series breaks out that winds up leading Sarah into a red glowing cave. When she wakes up the next morning, she's actually reliving the next day. Only Niles seems to be aware of everything that's happened. He explains that the two are now stuck in an infinite time loop. Added to that is Roy, another individual that Niles inadvertently got stuck in the time loop. He's sworn a blood oath in order to attempt to get out. Still, Niles, Sarah, and to a lesser extent Roy all have to work together somehow to escape Palm Springs. So, um, yeah, it's kind of uh, next generation Groundhog's Day, even though apparently they're also making Groundhog's Day 2, so... Uh, Okay, uh, definitely plays way more into the humor, I think. There's not too much in the way of maudlinness. Uh, this is a very quick movie. It's only about 90 minutes long. I think, I'll say right off the bat, there are some uh, great performances from Andy Samberg and um, uh, Kristen Milani. Milani, oh, the actress who plays Sarah. Um, they're great in it. Uh, J.K. Simmons, he's as dependable as usual as Roy. Uh, basically, uh, the story with Roy is he... Uh, Niles earlier, there was an earthquake... The, the whole setup is, is that there was an earthquake in Palm Springs that exposed this cave. Niles kind of stumbled in, drunkenly stumbled into it after seeing his girlfriend, who was part of the wedding party, uh, cheating on him. And he got stuck in this loop. And then at one point, he met Roy. And... Uh, they kind of, you know, had some fun and hit things off a little bit, and then they stumbled into this time loop together, and Roy's not happy about it, and the thing is, Roy lives in Irvine, and he basically commutes to Pulse, Palm Springs for the wedding, and does, yeah, exactly, so he's kind of, so he only shows up sporadically for some reason, and uh, when Sarah gets stuck, too, it's like, again, Niles points out, like, yeah, we're stuck here, no matter what we do. If we fall asleep in another place, we wake up here. If we get killed, we wake up here. Uh, the difference is, is that uh, when they wake up, you know, if they do something where they get killed, uh, for example, um, Sarah drives her car headfirst into a semi-truck, yeah, they wake up as if they've been in a car accident. So it's not such a good idea to do stuff like that. It's better to uh, just fall asleep. Um, and then, of course, obviously, as they keep trying, as they go through and have first kind of give a sort of, you know, no shits life and have fun and they grow closer together. Uh, Roy doesn't really appear much in this. I think that's one of the drawbacks here is that, yeah, he, he appears at the beginning to sort of precipitate Sarah entering the cave. And the idea is he interrupts them while they're, you know, fooling around and he goes into the cave, it basically, if you go into the cave, you automatically reset. You don't even have to fall asleep, but if you fall asleep or die, it resets, if that makes any sense. And then she sees uh, Niles going into the cave, so she follows him in there, and that's how uh, that pot works through. And so, yeah, and then, but then, like I said, Roy kind of vanishes, and... Then he pops up again, you know, like he's in a montage at one point, but again, he pops up again, and then he pops up one last time, and it's like, you sort of made him out to be like this big thing, but he really didn't. And uh, <laughs> so, yeah, it just it felt a little weird. Also, there are some pretty major actors, I would say, at least recognizable actors, in this film in roles that really don't do anything. <laughs> Uh, Tyler Hecklin plays uh, Abe, who is the groom in the wedding. He is, uh, you know, he's uh, Superman on the Super, uh, CW Supergirl show, and he's getting his own show there. He was on Teen Wolf, Seventh Heaven, Road to Perdition. Uh, Camilla Mendez, who's Veronica on Riverdale, is uh, the bride, Sarah's sister. Uh, Peter Gallagher is the father. It's so, yeah, it's like, uh, there's some pretty recognizable people here in roles that, again, really could have gone to anyone. You probably could have saved a little bit of money here. Yeah, they don't really contribute anything except, again, it gets a little, cl this is a point where it gets a little cliche, and I'll say a minor spoiler. It turns out that Sarah slept with Abe the night before the wedding. Yeah, again, this is like a little revelation that happens, and yeah, like, I think that got a little, like, 
at one point, sir, they sort of have her talk about why she's sort of cynical and doesn't really believe in love or anything like that. And it's because uh, it had a little bit to do with uh, her mother passing away when she was young, but also it had something to do with she had sort of rushed into a marriage. It's like she was in a relationship that she knew was falling apart and like they had gotten engaged, but she was too afraid to just not go through with it. And, you know, the marriage didn't really work out. And I think that should have been enough. Like, we didn't need to add this whole cheating subplot in on top of that. Just, it kind of makes her a little less likable. But still, uh, at one point, she starts to show some initiative, and she actually starts trying to learn quantum physics to figure out how to get out of this loop. But Niles actually kind of wants to stay in the loop, because, again, like, why, you know, live for a terrible tomorrow when you could just live in a perfect today? And you can kind of understand his reasoning there. And... So, yeah, uh, like I said, it's overall, it's a really good movie. It's really fun. And, I mean, most of my problems with it are kind of minor, eh, pretty nitpicky stuff. But still, like I said, it's really good. I would say if there's one other drawback, the climax really drags out. There's a point where they're going to do something, and it's like, just get to it right now. We don't really need the big flowery speech, and this flowery speech just keeps going on and on. Like, are you trying to pad this thing out to 90 minutes? <laughs> like, I mean... It's 90 minutes long to begin with. You know, the two minutes you cut out of it, I don't think really would have mattered too much. So, yeah. Uh, overall, I would highly recommend Palm Springs. It's really enjoyable. I'm going to be giving it an A. So, there. Uh, yeah, like I said, uh, my problems with it are pretty minor. They're not too terrible. And it's, uh, like I said, a thoroughly enjoyable, thoroughly funny film. So, uh, very well done. Close the office today, AJB. Eh, yeah, right. Watch this. Bob Johnson. Johnson, where's the shipment from Shanghai? DHL cleared customs in the air and is scheduled to arrive at noon. All right. What about New Haven? Left New York at 8, 11 a.m. and is currently on a truck. Johnson? Sir? Get tracking information sent to you anytime, anywhere. DHL. Ground international overnight. Customer service is back in shipping. Okay, so, you know, technically I watch this on Hulu and because I have the, uh, the Hulu service, I have it bundled with Disney Plus, so I'm getting the yeah, cheapest paid uh, Hulu service with the ads in it. <laughs> so I thought, oh, there'll probably at least be a couple trailers here, and I'm like, no, there was one commercial at the beginning of the film, and that was it. <laughs> uh, it was just the the progressive, I think, it's the insurance company ad where it's the therapy group for people who've turned into their parents because they saved on insurance. Yeah, so... <laughs> Yeah, not really anything there. Um, the next video is going to be the random trigger review on Howard Chaikin's American Flag. Uh, after that, it's going to be uh, AEW's Fight for the Fallen. Uh, that recap and review that will be up on Wednesday. Uh, and then after that, it will be the recap and review for um, Extreme Rules 2020, the horror show. Um, no movie reviews for the next couple of weeks, unfortunately. It's just... There's really nothing coming out. Like, I know there's the Charlize Theron thing that's based on a comic, but it's just... Uh, my Netflix reviews are just... Like, when I review something on Netflix, it doesn't seem like anyone watches it. <laughs> so, you know, again, the theatrical... St I mean, the stuff that's that's gotten decent views are stuff that... Is mainly stuff that was supposed to come out in theaters and then, you know, had to get shunted to on-demand viewing. And so, yeah, it's like... I don't know what to do. Um, yes, I know Tenet is supposed to come out in August. I know Mulan is supposed to come out in August. But those things were pushed back so many times already. I just I don't see it happening again. Like, I especially the way things are now, where everything's spiking back up. So, yeah, I just uh, I'm gonna try to keep up as many reviews as I can. I am gonna do some other stuff. Uh, obviously, uh, I'm gonna be uh, the next movie-ish review will be uh, I'll be doing the premiere of Muppets Now on Disney Plus uh, that's at the end of the month um, I'll probably do the Phineas and Ferb special that's coming up uh, I know that's premiering on Disney XD and yeah it's premiering on Disney XD but it'll be on Disney Plus like a couple of days later so I think we could just do that and review that it probably wouldn't be a bad idea so yeah, uh, and then maybe if uh, I don't know how long Muppets Now is going to be, but it's again it's one of those what it, 
I don't know if they're doing it, what they, uh, if Disney Plus is going to release it the way they did The Mandalorian, where you're only going to get one episode every couple of weeks, but, you know, maybe I'll do a full uh, season recap of that when it comes out, too. So, see you all next time. Hey guys, remember, you can help support my channel at patreon.com forward slash sleepy time for cat productions, where you can help request a movie, even if it's something like, say, Sonic the Hedgehog or the next Purge film. I'll review it.